Hello team and welcome to this video. Um, in this video, we're going to talk in detail over lesson planning, which we discussed. And so here you see in the Google Drive, the place where you will put your lesson plans in so we can dedicate ourselves to looking at them and seeing them while the lesson is going on. However, I'm opening up the lesson plan sample. And the lesson plan sample is a template that is already done. And it's going to show you exactly how the lesson plan process works. I'm going to actually do an I do and go through this piece to explain it. And then we're going to do a we do where I am going to make a model lesson and show you how it's done. So the very first place here is, of course, we have our name. And then we do our lesson plans for the week, unless you have special permission from somebody else. The next piece is in the vocabulary. The vocabulary is new vocabulary for the week. So in this case, I am teaching children um, gradual release. I do, you do, we do. But we want to track our academic vocabulary. So we're tracking how our students are growing through the curriculum, as well as vocabulary is very important to understanding. So when you're planning and you're looking at your units, you should be identifying the important vocabulary that is needed for that week for understanding. This next piece is very simple where we're talking about the subject. So which subject we're teaching in this case, I'm doing professional development, but you may be doing English, science, history, and then you're going to put your grade and your section. So this is sixth grade, A, B, C, Q, whatever section you are. And then the purpose of the week really comes from your understanding. And we talked about purpose. What is the purpose of a child being in the classroom? What are they attaining? So for me, when I wrote this out, my purpose is to drive teachers towards understanding the purpose behind planning and introduce the new lesson planning format. Your purpose may be to have students understand the um cycle, life cycle in science, or have students understand the importance of environmental consciousness in global perspectives. But it's basically your one sentence of what is important that must happen. Students understand verb usage in the French vocabulary understanding. What is the purpose of the week? Every time you see students, we're working towards this goal. Every time we're in class, everything we do works towards this goal. So that's just the basic setup for understanding. Now we go into the lesson plan. For this, you see period one, period two, period three, and I'm deleting this part out. This was for something different. And then period four. This is because the way that we do it, some teachers see a math class maybe twice a day. And so I can't do, or we can't do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, as you may not see kids every day, or you might not see your class. So we've counted out what you do per period. Period one, period two, period three, period four. So in this case, this teacher has four periods with their children. Some of you have just two periods with kids. So you would delete out period three and period four and focus on two periods. Some of us have five periods. So there's another lesson plan template that has five and you will plan out for your five periods in that place. Now, that's why we have period one, period two, period three, and period four. Because we're looking at the timeline of periods within your week you have to attain to the purpose of the week and which is your long-term goal. The very first part is very simple. This is where you copy and paste the subject standard based upon the planning guide. So if you're teaching fractions, there's an actual standard usually identified with a number um, like 7.2 
of what you should do and that's where you're going to copy and paste now remember for the second part of this video I am going to do it with you so this part I'm simply explaining so here's the sample where I used a standard of the planning protocols and you're focused on the standard for this period the next piece is a little bit tricky but easy it says after today's lesson students will be able to do what and that's it whatever they're able to do after the 45 to 55 minutes with you is where you put right here this is where we outline the student product what will the student be able to do or produce by the end of class to ensure they were successful during the lesson cycle process now you don't have to always do a big goal it can be chunked throughout the week and so I'm going to actually stop and do a sample with you so you can see it now. So real briefly, I'm going to take the time to just find a standard for sixth grade math because I should have done seventh grade. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I can go and do this for you. I'm going to go to Common Core. And I know we do Cambridge. And but for the sake of this activity, please allow me just to do common core so I can grab a standard real quick. But I'm going to show you the exact same way it's utilized. I will go to geometry and I'm going to grab. And so what you see here is your standards here. And this is how you can find what the standards are because they are usually given right here. So I'm going to do something very simple find the area of right triangles and other triangles and I'm gonna do it as an introductory so I take my standard here copy and then I'm going to paste it here so this is kind of where my example is going to be so you see here where I said copy and paste the standard this is what I've done here therefore the next piece and I want to talk about chunking is I need to say students will be able to students will be able to and this comes straight from the standard in this case my standard has find the area of right triangles that's one thing other triangles that's a second thing special quadrilaterals third and polygons four things by composing into rectangle fifth five things or to decomposing into triangles, six things, and other shapes, seven things in the standard. Apply these techniques in the context of real world, eight things, and math problems, nine things. That's why I say chunking, because this is literally a standard that teaches nine different things. Students cannot learn those nine things at one time. So when I look at me planning, I am planning what they can do in that 45 minute stage section. At this point in time, I am going to simply plan on introducing right triangles. We'll be able to understand right triangles and be able and, and be introduced. To finding the area what I've done is taken this big standard and I've broken it down to what they can attain to do in 45 minutes they will be able to understand right triangles and be introduced to finding the area notice I did not say that they will be able to because I'm not sure about my students capacity I am going to teach them but after 45 to 55 minutes I might not be able to have all students do that in fact, that might be my period two class, but I at least know what my goal is today. Now let's go ahead and get into the planning for the lesson. An engaging activity. How do I start my students with the class? If I just come in and say, hello everyone, open your books, this is a right triangle, this is what you're going to learn. Are my students fully engaged in wanting to be part of the lesson today. 
So I can come up with a very creative, engaging activity to say, how do I want them to learn? This can be an essential question. This can be a real life situation. This can be a video. This can be prior knowledge or even a brain dump. So off the top of my head quickly, I'm going to think of a video. Um, I can use a, um, a brain quiz, and I'll explain that later. And I can turn around and do um, a question. Now, are we going to do all three things? No. This is me planning. Now, if my internet is always not good, I don't think I want to dedicate myself to um, introducing with a video. Even though videos on YouTube with angles and right angles are very engaging and that probably is the best. But unless I've downloaded it to my laptop or I know I have consistent internet, I am not going to use or be focused or dedicated to using a video online. So I'm going to think of how else can I get kids engaged? Essential question. And so let's go to real quick, if I need help, what is an essential question? Question in education in math, but I'm going to be more specific for, for right angles. Let's see if anything is on the internet for us. Hmm. What are the differences, if we look at this one, between acute, obtuse, right, and equilateral angles? What are angle bisectors? How can I describe angles? So here's a couple of ideas for angles for my questions, right? I am actually not going to use any of these. Ooh, that's a great one. Pythagorean theorem to determine if a triangle is right triangle or not. However, I'm using grade six. So while this is a great way to kind of start um, doing your mind, I am still going to look at something else to make it a little simpler. And I am going to start my kids with the brain quiz of am I right or not? And this is a brain quiz I'm literally making up right now. Quiz where students are detect determining, you have to catch me, I'm sorry, if a shape is right or not. So triangles, I'm going to make a small little piece of paper and have kids work together in partners to determine if something is right or not. And in doing this, they're actually going to be working on previous vocabulary and understanding. That is how I plan to introduce it. That's why I look here and say the purpose of engagement activity. My purpose is to provoke thought, inspire a question, introduce a concept. Um, what is the reason why we're doing it? In this one, I'm actually checking prior knowledge. If I give them this activity before, I'm checking to see what do they actually understand. So I'm checking prior knowledge slash checking vocabulary because do they know what a right angle is? Because this will help me understand where we are in determining area later. So my engaging activity should only be five to 10 minutes. And this quick little brain quiz is going to be five minutes. Now. This is where we go into the gradual release. This is where we introduce the I do portion, which the teacher directs the idea and concepts of the lesson. We introduce methods, understanding, ideology, and skills. During this time, the focus of the class should be on the teacher. And this is where I know I have up to 15 minutes to plan out what I'm going to do. Now, this is a two-part lesson where I'm focusing on will students be able to understand right triangles and find the area. So in this case, I'm definitely looking at this engaging activity, but I am also focusing on me explaining, teacher will explain, 
what a right triangle is by using academic vocabulary and the understanding of a 90 degree angle. Now, I'm in math and I know for sure that that is only going to take about five minutes. So I'm putting that there for me that I should be able to explain what a right triangle is and have students come back and talk in round robin. Students will review the understanding in page, if I have a book, 65, that's talking briefly about Now, when I say they will review the understanding in page 65 in textbook, I am only talking about the vocabulary portion, that they can understand what a right triangle is. Students will communicate or discuss to show understanding. Now, I am going to spend majority of my time after I understand the understanding that the teacher will then introduce the formula for area. Now, I have to be careful here. And the reason why is, do my students actually understand what area is? In some classes, they might. In other classes, if we have not done geometry before, they're not going to understand what area is or even perimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and state that I've already taught my students area, um, especially when it comes to squares or different thing like that. But this is a part, and I'm just going to highlight it, that you have to be conscious about with your own kids because you can't teach them something they haven't understood or heard before. So I am now teaching the area formula for area. Teacher will then apply the formula to sample equations on the board. Ah, sorry for my typing. So now we know that I am doing it. However, I still have a couple minutes. Teacher will slowly move the discussion to have students show or explain the steps towards solving for area. Okay, so I'm just showing how even though I'm still working in the I do, even though I am still the producer of the information, I know that I'm going to slowly start pulling a discussion to get kids verbalizing and helping my communication in the I do process. Because the next part is the guided instruction we do. So this is the collaborative learning portion of the lesson. Students should be practicing the concept with the teachers or peers as they are practicing gathering additional information or determining understanding. So remember here, where I have said it, that I am still at the board and I might be like, Johnny, what's my next step? Tony, what's my next step? Now, when we come to guided instruction, I'm going to separate this since I have 15 minutes to be more purposeful. So I am going to go ahead and teacher will let the students completely lead, lead solving two problems on the board. Now, I want to be very concrete here. I said students here. I am not giving this away to one student and letting that one student solve on the board and we all watch. I am let students guide the 
solving by asking different questions to different people so they kind of work together as a class to solve. My goal is to make sure that in the we do process that there's a lot more action from majority of your class. And when we say majority of your class, we're talking about 60% of your class or more. If one student is doing the learning on the board, what are the rest of the students doing? One student is active, the other students are passive. That is not a we do. That is more still a guiding and I do, except you let somebody else facilitate the learning. So I'm going to be very conscious regarding this to make sure that I am having students participate completely in the process. Now, I'm not doing this for 15 minutes. Even though I've started the we do, my goal is to students um, will receive a, I'm going to go ahead and say worksheet on about five different angles, five different triangles with a variety of skill or levels. Like I'm going to have, so I'm going to go five, I'm actually going to go maybe six, too easy, too medium, too challenge. Uh, showing how to create or how to find area. Students are going to now do collaborative learning. Do you do it together? Students will work with partner. I'm going to go ahead and say table partner. Can't spell partner. Let's go. Part. <laughs> Nerd, there we go, the table partner to solve the different equations, formulas. So I want to do this and then teacher will monitor the learning and assist with students showing difficulties. So this is a chance for my students to really be released and do the learning on their own, but they don't feel totally by themselves. They have a partner, they have a group. I am also conscious that I'm not putting my very high kid with my very low kid, because sometimes in that case, my high kid does all the work and the low kid just watches. I'm putting my low kid with a medium kid so that they're actually working together. I have to be strategic in these pieces where everybody is getting the correct assistance or I am walking around as the teacher to ensure that I know the problem areas and who understand and who doesn't. So this is what we're doing for about 15 minutes. And that part is the practice and different things here. And this is the part where the learning really gets shown and applied. So we are knowing what students understand and don't. If I see a lot of people having the same problems, then I go back to an I do and we do it together. Now, the last piece I did state is that our students are working on three different levels, level one, level two, level three. Remember, this is our first day of understanding. So if students are struggling on a level three, that's okay because that should be the challenge. My goal is for my students to be able 100% to solve the first two and 75 to 80% solve the next two. If they can solve the challenge, that's very, very good. And that helps me know that I'm moving progressively forward and we should be growing and going to next steps. If they're not solving it, then that lets me know that I need to spend another day still going over the formula and practicing. There's also a difference between students struggling over the formula and students struggling over calculations, meaning that if we're working with fractions, and let's say that the students did this, and every time they were with a whole number, they solved it correctly, but every time they're with a fraction, they're getting mistakes, that means they still understand how to find formula. They're having 
problems with the actual context of the numbers. And that is something different to work with because that means your students need more work with fractions. It doesn't mean they need more work with the understanding of how to solve for area. So you have to be very, very cautious in that. Now here's the independent learning, which means you do it alone. And so after we've done the practice, the students are able to get their actual assignment. So I am going to assign back to the textbook, textbook pages. If I said 65 to 66 questions, eight through 20. This is independent work where the students are now working quietly for about 10 to 15 minutes um, to show that they're doing the work and they're getting that piece done. Uh, I'm also spot checking and walking around with students to show exactly what I am doing or those who are struggling. So I'm going to actually write here, struggling students are pulled to the teacher guidance circle and will work on problems with supervision. So if I still have, and that's something I like to do all the time, students who said I'm not comfortable or I need a little bit help or can you watch me, I had a special table to which they could come and when they felt strong enough, they would go back or I felt they were strong enough, they could go back to their desk and work independently. And so for that piece, I'm going to put that there. Now we have our closing activity. There is always something that closes the activity and ends the idea um, and the objective must be revisited. So I'm going to simply sit there and say I'm going to restate the objective and verbally get a fist of five of understanding how to solve area for right triangles. So for this case, I'm not going to do an actual exit ticket. You can. This is me, um, and this is the idea of closing this activity. I'm going to do a fist of five. Then I'm going to have students, instead of reflect, write a note to, to self in their math journal explaining how to solve area for right triangles. So instead of me having them write full notes here, um, if they're getting it, I'm just going to have them write like a Twitter tag or a self-reflection in their math that explains how to do it. And this is a great closing activity because it helps them revisit what they have learned, did we hit the objective, and they also now have a note in their notebook for them to be able to come back if they need help remembering how to do that. How do I know that the students learned today? And so here, this is checkpoints or formative assessments that help me understand during the learning, the students understand or need additional assistance. So remember, I said I had my guidance table. And then here, I talk about fist of five. So I have a fist of five. Then I had teacher monitoring during the um, partner talk, which I'm spelling monitoring wrong, there we go. And then I had partner checks and understanding. And so then I also had, um, I thought I had one more. Oh, I had the partner worksheet. So these are different ways that before I even assigned the final assignment, um, except for the fist of five, um, that I was checking to see how they were learning. Um, this is why I looked at this this way. Now, in the lesson plan, it says, in what ways will I differentiate the learning this week? So this is where you put the methods that you ensure to use differentiation and engage the students engage the lessons to students on multiple levels. So at this point in time, I have not done a full week, but to help you understand 
what I'm talking about is where did I do differentiation here? And this lesson actually didn't have a lot of differentiation because it's an introductory lesson. Now, there was a part where I talked about I would have led with video, which is a differentiation tactic. I did not use that, but that is a different way. I'm going to look and see what else I did. The am I right, brain quiz or not, um, is a check for understanding, which let me go ahead and put back here. And how did I know students learn today? I did do the brain quiz, which ha activated prior knowledge because that was a check. Um, <clears throat> where's my, I really don't think I did a lot of differentiation because the differentiation for the day actually comes with the struggling students. So I can say the guidance table, but it was a lot of introductory work, which means that I should focus on my next lesson, showing a little bit more differentiation strategies to hit my, um, different learners. So I'm going to go ahead and set the guidance table which is used to assist struggling students one on one. Okay, so this is the sample of how I did the lesson plan. I am going to leave this in the Google Drive so you can see it. Um, but I would love if you went ahead and tried to create your own um right here for period four so you can practice the understanding i am 100 percent available for questions and calls and different things that will help you understand a little bit more about how the lesson plan is done if there's another video needed trust me i will definitely do it and make sure that we are all working together to ensure this thank you so much for watching I truly appreciate this and thank you so much.